In this tutorial, I want to cover some UV mapping techniques for more complex objects. So I have an arch here. I have a multi sub object material that's set up. I'm going to go ahead and select the mesh, right click, and assign material to selection. So here we are. We have our object. It has the materials assigned to it. So a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select the arch part. I'm actually going to come over here to detach. I'm going to detach that as a separate object. And then I'm going to come into the rest of the model. And from the front, I'm going to go ahead and select half of it and delete it. And then from the top, I'm going to hit Z to zoom in. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select half of it here and just orbit around. I'm just going to focus on unwrapping this one part. So let's grab all this. We're going to assign it all UV1, which is our brick. And so to start with, I'm going to go ahead and just put a UVW map on. I'm going to set it to box. And so the height of this object comes out to this 1873. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that value into all four of those spots. There we go. So that gives me a basic square set of UVs. Now, on the side here, it looks like it doesn't wrap around. So what I could do to get it so that the UVs actually wrap all the way around is I could come over, I could change the axis. So if I see how I change it to Y, and now my texture, you see how the brick appears to tile all the way around? So that's pretty cool, right? Now I can, there's a couple things I could do to go through and work on tuning this. So let's go in here and instead of having it at this kind of weird square value I was thinking would be a good idea, but actually I think it's kind of kind of lame. Let's uh, go into the gizmo, Alt W to go to the wide view. Let's see, I got my left view. Let's make this let's make this my front. Oops, F for front. There we go. I'm gonna move this over. Let's take a look. So I do want to have it set the bricks kind of start at the bottom. Let's just scale it up a little bit. And I'm just doing this with my texture. Ideally what you want to do, it'd be great if you could get it so that your brick doesn't go halfway up like this. It starts to look weird. Anything you could do to kind of get your brick to sort of sit or whatever your texture is to kind of sit. So it looks like the structure is actually built out of it. it always makes it nice. So that's that's pretty good. I kind of, just by scaling and moving this gizmo around, I think that did a pretty good job. So let's right click and we'll convert that at poly. So that, that's going to give us a good base set of UVs for this part of the model. Now, do we want to have that texture on all this? No, we don't. I know I have a secondary, I have some additional textures on here. I have like a concrete. And so some of that I'm going to want to have that concrete. So that was two. So I'm going to select those and put ID two. I'm going to come over here, Polygon, hold Shift, and then Grow. I'm going to change that one to 2 as well. And then, let's see, up here, I probably want most of the top of this capital to be that ID2. There we go. All right, now, from here, I have the this, you know, basic UV unwrap on the model. Uh, I did go ahead and I did create assign a trim texture. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could put the trim texture on that por that portion. And then if I just go into the unwrap UVW and say open UV editor, I can come down to the bottom. I should be able to find the, I think it was ID3. Yep, that was it. And if I select the polygons that make this up, let's find them. There they are. I can hit break because I am selected and then just move them up. I could just position them wherever I might want them on this. And so we are going to be putting symmetry on. So ideally we put this end over here on a spot that's going to work. So let's, let's actually move this so it sits just underneath this little bit of a frame. And now this guy, we're going to, we're going to drag him up. There we go. So I know this end is right at an end spot. I could probably come over. I'm going to hit absolute type in it and type in negative two. 
So I know that far end over there is still right at the edge. So he's going to tile really nice. And it's just a question what I want to do here. I think what would probably be good is if I took this edge here, I'm just kind of pulled this guy over. I think that would probably work pretty good. Let's see what we got. See how he's kind of unwrapping there. And I think the only thing is I'm, as I look at it, I realize the entire thing is upside down. So I'm just going to rotate that. There we go. And as I look, I could click and now I see this bounding box that tells me that it's not actually, they aren't actually connected to each other. So if I come in here to edge, oops, let's go over there. I could select this one edge here. I'm going to make this align vertically. When, if I have him selected, it means this guy over here, he's also going to connect to him. So I can come over, grab this one, and then hit stitch. And see how they wrap around really nice at this point. So let's grab everything. And I'm going to offset him negative one one more time. And so now I can see, and I can think about what I want to do. And I think I want to take this and move it so it sits right in the center of this guy. Because now when I put symmetry on, it's going to mirror it. And it's probably going to look pretty nice. So let's try that out. I'm going to convert that at poly. And now with my UV should be in the right spot or my center. So I got symmetry, right? Left, right. I put one more and I just need to change the axis on it. And I need to change the angle. There we go. So there we go. So that does that. That gives me a real basic set of UVs in my model. Now I could come back in to the unwrap UVW. And if I go into polygon, uh, there's a couple different ways. You could just live with this patterning that's on here. If it's something that looks pretty bad, you could always come in and do select inverted polygons and hit break and then mirror them so that they're no longer inverted. And you could go through and start to kind of select your edges and just start to stitch pieces together like that. Like if I come in and select one, as long as I deselect the other, I could stitch. Right. And so that, and that's not something that's necessarily required. That's if you, if you want to do that, you go through and do it. What I'm doing is I'm clicking and then I, I deselect one and I use the stitch to move the other one over to the side. And it's the same thing here. If I grab this edge, I'm going to deselect the one that's over there on the side and stitch and see how it brings the brick over so it comes up. Same thing with this guy. I could grab that edge, deselect this one and stitch that up. All right. And so it's just kind of looking to see which ones. All right, so he's up at the top there. If I grab this edge here, I think it's deselect the one at the bottom. Nope. Deselect the one at the top and then stitch and then see how it moves it over. There we go. And then same thing here. Deselect the one on the side and stitch. So as I look at this and as I go through and I hit these really quick, I realize I should have done this first. So I'm just going to real quick go through and stitch these. Oops. It looks like something. You see how when I stitch it shifted these on the side? Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to select these guys I plan to stitch and just hit break so they're not connected to anything. Now when I grab this edge, deselect the one to stitch it, nothing moves with it. Okay. And it just kind of pulls those around. So now that I kind of went through and did that with those bricks, I'm actually going to go ahead and just throw another symmetry on here again to get that kind of cleaned up. And then one more along the Z axis going back. And so see now how my brick kind of wraps around. That's really what I do want. I, I kind of like that. So I'm going to stick with that. Okay. Now we have our, our basic uh, UV mapping there. We could just apply some basic UVs here to uh, this frame, right? This piece right here. Uh, one spot that probably would be a good idea to fix now that everything's stitched back together. So let's go ahead and we'll grab everything. Oops. 
I'm going to go back into Unwrap UVW, Open UV Editor, and in Planar Mode, I'm just going to grab all of this because the inside of this shape kind of has some odd distortion. Like you see how the bricks kind of change weird shapes in there. So let's zoom out. I know when I was clicking, I could see had a sense it was clicking on something extra. So we'll just make sure we only have what we need, which is what we have there. Okay, we'll open UV Editor, and now F2 to toggle that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, just hit Planar. All right, and then I'm gonna peel it. Oh boy, looks like we got an extra polygon there. All right, let's figure out, where's that extra polygon? Oh, right there, there we go. So now I'll hit planar and best align, and I'm going to unfold it and say tools relax by polygon. There we go. And then I can take all of that and rotate it 90 degrees so that now it rotates, right? It's going to kind of sit the same size. And just to double check the sizing, let's grab an edge over there. And I'm going to hit this little icon display only selected. If I deselect this one here, in order to get the UVs to kind of match to be the right same size consistently, I'm going to go in, use freeform, hold the control in the corner and scale that up. So now the bricks will be about the same size. We won't have to worry about them matching exactly because we have geometry that covers up those corners. So there we go. That kind of gives us some basic UVs. Now we did detach this and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make a separate tutorial where I go through and show how we could uh, UV unwrap that using some spline techniques.